Good evening, students. So let me take up the fifth paper. Look at the first problem. In a vernier scale calipers, 10 vernier scale division. 10 vernier scale division coincides with the 8th main scale division. Then what is the least count of the vernier calipers? What's the formula for least count students? Least count is nothing but the main scale division minus the vernier scale division. I'll keep MSD as it is. Out of 10 vernier scale division, which one is coinciding? 8. So 8 by 10 times of main scale division. So 8 the division is coinciding among the 10 vernier scale division. So VSD will be 8 by 10 of MSD. So 1 minus 8 by 10 times of 1. Reference as 1 I am taking. So it is 2 by 10. What is 2 by 10? 0. 0.2. The unit is in millimeter. So 0. 0.2 millimeter is the least count. 0. 0.2 millimeter can be taken as what? 10 power minus 4 meter. So option 2 is the right answer. So least count is nothing but main scale division minus vernier scale division. 1 minus vernier scale division is 8 by 10 times the main scale division. Substitute, you'll get the answer. Now, a particle released from the rest, it covers a height of 25 meter in the last second of the journey. What is the total time of flight? Total time. So, what is the distance traveled in the last? What is the distance traveled in the nth second formula? U plus A by 2 into 2n minus 1. What is the distance traveled in the last second? 25. Initial time, u, it is coming from rest, so initial speed will be 0. Since it is falling under the gravity, a value is 10, 10 by 2 into 2n minus 1. Can you simplify for n? Can you simplify for n? Okay. 
how much you'll get? 25 equals to 5 into 2n minus 1. 2n minus 1 equals to 5. 2n equals to 6. n equals to 3. So, what is the time of fall? Three seconds. Look at this. In this block, actually the block will try to move downward with what force? If it is theta, it will be mg sin theta. But addition to that, there will be an opposing force. The opposing force is, force is called the frictional force, which is given by mu into n, where normal reaction is going to be balanced with mg cos theta. If you split that mg into two components, one will be mg sin theta, the another one will be mg cos theta. You know that downward force is mg. Along the plane, it is mg sin theta and mg cos theta. Since the frictional force is inclined parallel to that, even applied force and the frictional force are parallel, they are in the same direction. So the net force is nothing but the applied force plus the frictional force. What is the applied force? It is mg sin theta. Frictional force is mu into n. But what is n here? mg cos theta. So what is the total force? mg sin theta plus mu times of mg cos theta. So second option. Since they are parallel, the two force should be added apart. Suppose if these two force are acting in the opposite direction, then we are doing the subtraction of these two. Look at this. There is a bucket of mass 5 kg that is tied with a light rope. It is moving with a constant acceleration. 2.5 meter per second square. The bucket is lowered by 10 meter. What is the work done? You know the basic formula for the work done. Work done is force into the displacement. Since the work is done against the gravity, it should be minus F into S. Now, what is the total force? Total force is nothing but actually downward force is mg, but it is tied with a constant acceleration. So, ma should act vertically upward. Weight should be act downward. But it is acted upon with the rope with some acceleration A. So Mg minus Ma will be the net force. What is mass? 5 into 10 minus 5 into acceleration is 2.5. 5 into 10 will be 50. 5 into 2.5 will be 12.5. So this value will be equal to 37.5 Newton. This is the net force. So work done will be equal to net force into displacement. Net force is 37.5 into the displacement. What about the displacement here? The displacement is taken by 10 meter. So work done will be minus 37.5 into 10 will be minus 375 joule. So option four is the right answer. So work done by the rope is minus 375 joule. Whatever the work is done by the rope, that work is done against the gravity. So only we are taking with the negative side. Look at the next problem. There is a uniform square plate, ABCD of mass 2 kg. Two points of masses 10 gram are placed at the corner C and D as shown. This is C and this is D. This C and D is having 10 grams. This square plate is having how much kg? 2 kg. 
Now, the center of mass shifts on the line. See here, between these two, there will be a attractive force. Between these two, there will be an attractive force. As a result, it will move towards like this. So the center of mass will move towards the line O to Z. So center of mass lies towards the O to Z. It's a very quite simple. Since the two forces acting like this, the center of mass should lie along this line, somewhere here. So it's, it is mentioned as this is O, this is as Z. So this line is OZ. So center of mass will lies on the line OZ. Next problem. The length of the simple pendulum is one meter. Bob is given with 14 meter per second square. During the upward motion of the bob, string breaks into the horizontal with the maximum vertical displacement from its initial position. Now they are asking the vertical displacement, let us say H. Whenever it is oscillating, its kinetic energy should get balanced with the potential energy. So kinetic energy should be of mv square. Potential energy should be mgh. So m and m will get cancelled out. h is equal to v square divided by the 2g. Now what is the velocity it has given initially in the horizontal direction? 14. So 14 square divided by 2 into 10. 14 into 14 divided by 2 into 10. So 2 ones are 2 seven are. And 114, 14 by 10. So you can tell two sevens are two fives are. Five fives are 49 divided by five. It is approximately close to 10 meter. So option D will be the right answer. If you put G equals to 9.8, you will get the accurate exact answer. So which is the right option? 10 meter is the right option. Yeah, this is the disc, slips on the rough inclined plane. What is the ratio of the time taken in the two motion? Please remember the formula students. Time taken is actually given by the formula root of 2L into root of 2L into uh, this is G and you are taking 1 plus k squared by r squared. So, t is inversely proportional to this. So, disc first slips down the smooth, then rolls. When it is, disc is slips down like this, it is completely translation. So, for translation, it will be 1, t1. Now, it is start rolling. It start rolling. Let us say the time taken is T2. For rolling, there will be a radius of gyration K. But for translation, there will be no radius of gyration. So if you want T1 by T2, it should be taken inversely, right? So 1 divided by root of 1 plus K squared by R squared. Formula will be 1 plus K squared by R squared. 2L into root of 1 plus K squared by R squared into G. So, tai is directly proportional to root of 1 plus k squared by r squared. If this term will come to denominator in the case of velocity. If you are talking velocity, then it will be root of 2gh by 1 plus k squared by r squared. For time, it is 2l by g into root of 1 plus k squared by r squared. Here, k value will be 0 for translation. So, I am taking only 1. 1 divided by root of 1 plus. What is the value of k squared by r squared for the disk? They are asking for the disk. You have to remember the formula. For the disk, k squared by r squared value will be 1 by 2. For disk, for disk, remember the value k squared by r squared value will be 1 by 2. So k squared r squared will be 1 by 2. So this is 1 divided by root of 3 by 2. That value will be root of 2 by 3. So root of 2 by 3 means option 2 is the right answer.
a satellite is seen after six hours over the equator. When it is opposite to the Earth's direction, its angular velocity is about what? Now, you know that the total angular speed omega 1 plus omega 2 will be equal to 6 hours means 2 pi by 6. Angular displacement by the time. Total angular displacement will be 360 or 2 pi. And this is time. Time is 6 hours. So what is omega 1? 2 pi by 6 minus omega 2. When it comes to opposite direction, what should be the time taken? If it has to come to opposite direction, the time taken is 24 hours. So 2 pi by 24. So what is omega 1 then? Pi by 3 minus pi by 12. So omega 1 is LCM will be 12. So 4 pi minus this thing, 3 pi. 3 pi by 12 means pi by 4. So option 3 is the right answer. Time period of the simple pendulum at the equator is Te, at the pole is Tp. You know that acceleration due to gravity at the equator is less and acceleration due to gravity at the pole is more. You know the time period of the simple pendulum is given by 2 pi into root of L by G. What's the time period formula? 2 pi into root of L by G. How time period and G are related? T is inversely proportional to root G. So if G is increasing means time period at the equator should be more, time period at the pole should be less. So time period at the equator should be more than the time period of the pole. So time period of the equator is more. So option one is the right answer. A tube in the vertical plane is shown in the figure. It is filled with a density rho. The force exerted by the fluid. What is the force exerted by the fluid? What is the force exerted by the fluid? You know the formula for the force exerted is given by pressure into area. Pressure is nothing but rho g into height, into area. Area is denoted with a naught. What is the height? One height is total is 3L and this height is L. So what is the remaining height? Remaining height will be 2L. So it is nothing but 2 times of rho G L into A0. So what is the force exerting on the fluid? 2 times of rho G L into A0. What is the property of the surface tension? You know that property of the surface tension tells surface energy is nothing but the surface tension into area. Surface energy is equal to surface tension into area. So, surface energy, surface energy by tension will be equal to what area? will be equal to what area. So as the surface tension increases, the area has to decrease. So what is the surface tension? Tension, surface tension is the property of a fluid, isn't it? It is the property of a fluid where when it is placed on the surface, it tries to occupy the minimum area. So surface tension is the property of the fluid where it tries to keep the minimum surface area on the top. So it tries to decrease the surface tension. The surface tension starts decreasing the surface area. Vt versus temperature. What is the graphical variation of Vt versus T? You know that according to your Charles law, V is directly proportional to T on both the side, right? You just multiply by T on both the side. Vt is directly proportional to T squared. So Vt is directly proportional to T squared means it should be a parabola curve. The parabola curve means option 1. Vt versus T squared is always a parabola graph. 
calculate the mean free path of the nitrogen molecule at 27 degree celsius for atmosphere 1 given diameter of the nitrogen molecule and also they have given the boltzmann constant k you know that the mean free path is given by the formula kt divided pi root to 2 times of pi d squared into p where p stands for the pressure what is k k is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 Temperature is twenty-seven degree Celsius, so Kelvin is three hundred Kelvin. By root to two is one point four one four. Pi value three point one four. Diameter squared is one point five into ten power minus ten angstrom. Into pressure is one atmospheric pressure. You know that one atmospheric pressure is ten power five pascal. Now, this can be solved like this. 1.38 and 1.4 almost same. I'll cancel with this two. This is 300. I'm going to write only three into 10 power minus 21. This two zeros I'm taking here. Denominator is 3.14. 1.5 squared is 2.25 into 10 power minus 20. Minus 20 plus 5 is minus 15. Almost this two will get cancel out. 3.14. So approximately one by two point five, it is approximately close to point four into ten power minus fifteen. When it comes to denominator, it will be plus fifteen minus twenty one plus fifteen will be minus six or approximately four into ten power minus seven. So answer should be close to four into ten power minus seven. You can do only the rough calculation part, students. So it is four into ten power minus seven. Now there is two ideal gases at what temperature? T one and T two. They are mixed. There is no loss of energy. Molecules having masses m one m two. Number of their molecules are n one and n two. What is the temperature of the mixture? You know that the temperature of the mixture is given by M one C one theta one plus M two C two theta two divided by M one C one plus M two C two. So this is the common temperature of the mixture, where M represents the mass, C represents the specific heat, C represents the specific heat. But here the same two ideal gases are using. So C one is equal to C two. So if I take out mass as number of molecules n one theta one n two theta two divided by here n one plus n two. I am not taking C one C two because C one and C two are equal. If I take out common in both numerator and denominator, that C will cancel out. So it is going to be left out with m one theta one plus m two theta two. Divided by n one plus n two, so which is the right option? Option D is the right answer. Two vessels having equal volumes. They are keeping the equal volumes. Now one atmosphere, one is helium at two atmosphere. What is the ratio of hydrogen to that of helium? You know the formula for the velocity is given by three times out of R T by M. How velocity and molecular mass are related? It is inversely proportional to molecular mass. So, what is the velocity of hydrogen to the velocity of helium? Since molecular mass is inversely proportional, first you have to take the molecular mass of helium divided by the molecular mass of hydrogen. Molecular mass of Helium. What is the molecular mass of helium? Helium is represented with the two H E four, right? So molecular mass is four. For hydrogen, for hydrogen it is one H one. Mass is one, but this hydrogen is going to exist in diatomic. So what is the molecular mass? Two. So four by two will be root two. So what will be the ratio? Root two. Option two. the two waves of the same frequency 
moving in the same direction gives rise to what? Interference. Interference is the phenomenon where the two waves are going to get superimposed in the same direction with almost the same frequency. Electric field is supplied along the positive direction. What is the potential zero? Then what is the potential at x is equal to plus x naught? You know that electric field is given by the formula minus dv by dx. E is equal to, what's the potential difference? What is the potential difference? Let us say dv divided by, what is the displacement? x naught to zero, zero in the x naught to bandira. So what is the displacement? x naught. So what is potential difference then? Minus e into x naught. So potential difference will be minus e into x naught. There is a conducting sphere. Conducting sphere of radius r. The charge to a potential v volt. What is the electric field at the distance r? Which is greater than r from the center. What's the formula for the electric field intensity over there? E equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into charge by distance square. But at this particular point, the potential will act over here. The potential is nothing but 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q divided by R. So on comparing this, you will get E is equal to V capital R by R squared. Because 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q can be taken as V into R. V into R. So electric field intensity is V into capital R by R squared. So first option will be the answer. Look at this. Look at this. What is the potential difference across the cell A is zero? Across this, the potential difference is given as zero. What is the potential difference across the cell? B is equal to E minus divided by the total resistance that is A plus R. A plus R into phi. So across AB, the potential is given how much? 10 volt. EMF is 10 volt, sorry. So 10 minus 2 into 10 by 8 plus R, R value is 3 into 5. So simplify this. 5 into 2, 10, 10 into 10 will be 100 by 8 plus 3 will be 11. So V will be, it is 11. So 10 into 11 is 110 minus 100. 110 minus 100 will be 10 by 11. 10 by 11 is close to what? 1. 1 volt. Now, actually they have given internal resistance of this is 3 ohm. And the another one is 5 ohm. So what will be the capital R value they are asking? And they have given the potential difference is 0. So if you take this potential difference as 0, 0 equals to E minus 2E into 5 divided by 8 plus R. On doing shifting on this side, 2E into 5 divided by 8 plus R is equal to E. E and E will get cancelled out. 10 equals to 8 plus R, shift 8 to this side, R equals to 10 minus 8. So R value will be 2. So option 3 is the right answer. They are not asking to find the potential. Students, for this, you can use the shortcut method. What is that shortcut method here? Please remember, if they have given the two cells like this with internal resistance, 
if they are asking the external resistance here, it is just the difference of R1 minus R2. R1 is the internal resistance of the first cell. R2 is the internal resistance of the second cell. So one internal resistance is given 5. Second internal resistance is given 3. So 5 minus 3 value will be 2. So directly you can use this formula. Actually, this is the shortcut formula. So 2 ohm is the right answer. Eater operating voltage 220 boils 5 liters in 5 minutes. Suppose if you are using 110 volts, what will happen? You know that heat energy is nothing but V squared by R into T or T will be equal to H into R by V squared. Now, clearly you can tell that time is inversely proportional to voltage squared. Time is inversely proportional to V squared. So what is T1 by T2? It is V2 by V1 whole squared. So what is the first time? Five minutes by T2. What is V2? 110 by 220 whole squared. This is one time, two times. So 5 by T2 value will be equal to 1 by 2 squared. 1 by 2 squared value will be 4. So on cross multiplication, 2 will be equal to what is 4 into 5? Four fives are 20. So what will be the time taken for the second case? It is 20 minutes. So option 2 is the right answer. In the circuit shown below, in the circuit shown below, the cell has an EMF 10 volt, internal resistance 1 ohm. The other resistance are shown in the figure. What is the potential difference between A and B? Students, I will take up this problem later because the circuit is missing here. I will write the circuit in the next class and I will explain this problem 21st. Look at the 22nd. Look at the 22nd problem. Moving coil galvanometer, 1000 tons resistance is given. Another meter Q has 500 tons and resistance is 200. All other quantities are same in both the cases. The current sensitivity is what? What is the current sensitivity? What's the formula for the current sensitivity? It is theta by I. Sensitivity is theta by I. Theta by I is nothing but what? NBA divided by C. NBA divided by C. NBA divided by C. Now, number of tons is increased from 1000 to 200. 1000 in the 200. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 1000 tons to 500 tons. 1000 tons in the 500 tons. Sensitivity as to becomes two times, right? P is having more tons. Number of tons in P is more number of tons in Q. So you do double it there. So P is two times of Q. P is two times of Q. First option. Magnetic moment is initially inclined at 60 degree. What is the work done in this case in bringing the position? What is the work done formula? MB into 
cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2. Magnetic moment is 4. Magnetic field is 2.5 into 10. Theta 1 initially 0 minus cos 60. So 4 into 2.5 is 10. 10 into 10 will be 100. 1 minus 1 by 2. 1 minus 1 by 2 is nothing but 100 into 1 by 2. 100 into 1 by 2 is 50. So somewhere I think the printing mistake is there, students. Maybe this is not 25 into 10. It may be 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 Tesla. Remember. 2.5 into 10 power minus 3 Tesla. So 2.5 into 10 power minus 3. So 10 power minus 3, 2 into 5 will be 10. 10 into 10 power minus 3 is 10 power minus 2. So 1 by 2 is 0.5 into 10 power minus 2. Or I can take this as 5 into 10 power minus 3. So this is the work done. You know that Work done is always against the field. Work done is always against the field. So energy should be goes with always negative. So minus 5 into 10 power minus 3 joule. For an ideal transformer, step-up transformer, current is IP, IS. What is the voltages across VP and VS? For step-up transformer, for step-up transformer, the secondary should be more than primary. So what is the turn ratio formula? Turn ratio formula is Ns by Np is equal to Vs by Vp or in terms of current it says Ip by Is. So cross multiply Vs Is should be equal to Vp Ip. So first option Is Vs must be equal to Vp Ip. Look at this circuit. This is the LCR circuit. What is the value of the resultant voltage? For resultant AC circuit, the resultant voltage is V is equal to root of Vr squared plus Vl minus Vc whole squared. So root of what is Vr squared? 80 squared plus Vl minus Vc means 40 minus 100 whole squared. V equals to root of 8 squared is 6400. 40 minus 100 will be 60. 60 squared will be 3,600. So 6,400 plus 3,600 value will be 10,000. 10,000 if I take out the root, it will be 100. So option 3 is the right answer. Light with the energy flux is given. I. 27 watt per centimeter square. It's a non-reflecting surface. Surface area is 40. Time is this. They are exerting the force. Average force is given by the formula IA divided by C. Average force is given by the formula IA divided by C. So what is the intensity? 27. Area is 40. C value is 3 into 10 power 8. Simplify this.
three ones are three nines are. What is nine into four? Three sixty into ten power eight. Three point six into ten power ten. No, when a ten power eight goes to numerator, it becomes what? Minus eight. So minus eight plus two will be minus six. Three point six into ten power minus six. At large distances from the electromagnetic wave E and B or in the phase, if you decrease the distance R as per, and these components are called as what? Uh, in the case of a electromagnetic, this thing, the decrease in the magnitude with distance is inversely proportional. And the electromagnetic waves are radiated. So option two. It's a theoretical based question. In the Young's double slit experiment, path difference is k. What happens for lambda by three? What happens for lambda by three? You know that the relation between the phase and path is phase is two pi by lambda into path. What is the path difference they have given? Path difference is lambda by three, so this two will get cancelled out. Two pi by three. So what is the net electric magnetic field? It is I naught into cos squared phi by two. So it is I naught into cos squared. Phase angle is two pi by three by two is there, so it will become pi by three. What is cos pi by three? One by two. One by two squared is One by four. This intensity is I net. Maximum intensity is given as k for lambda. Intensity at maximum, I naught is given as k. So it will become k divided by four. So when it becomes for the path difference lambda by three, the intensity will become k by four. If particles are moving with the same velocity, what happens to the wavelength? You know that lambda is equal to h by m b. Lambda is equal to h by m b. Since velocity is the same, lambda is inversely proportional to mass. Since the mass is since the mass is less for the beta particle. Beta particle means electron. So for less particle, wavelength will be maximum. So for electron, for electron, mass is less. So wavelength of the electron is more. So for beta particle, what is the name of the beta particle? Beta particle are named as electrons. Look at the diode. Can you tell me which bias it is? Now, positive is connected to positive, so it should be a option four. Only this is converted into DC. Next off will not convert into DC because only one diode we are using. When we are using only one diode, only the fifty percent has to be converted. The next will convert. So option D is the right answer. Because the peak voltage is given as ten, so ten voltage is there. Here ten voltage is not there. Here five is there. So option one is not possible. Even though it resembles same, it won't be the same. What is the graphical nature of lan of R by R naught versus <coughs> lan A? It should be a straight line, right? You know that formula R is equal to R naught into A power one by three. R by R naught equals to R by R naught equals to A power one by three. Taking lan on both the side, lan of R by R naught equals to 
वन बाय थ्री टाइम्स ऑफ लैन ए सो लैन ए एंड लैन ऑफ आर बाय आर नॉट आर डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल एंड दे आर डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल यू कैन टेल इट इज ए स्ट्राइट लाइन सो ऑप्शन वन इज द राइट आंसर look at the logic here pick out the correct waveform when you give a1 it will be zero when you give b1 it will be zero because of not 0 plus 0 bar 0 plus 0 bar will be 1 0 plus 0 bar will be 1 so when both the inputs are 1 1 you are getting output as 1 so if it is 1 0 definitely will get zero if 0 1 it is zero If it is both zero, it will be zero. So definitely, it is going to be both one one. You will get one. One one, you will get one. In all the cases, it should be zero. So in all the cases here, zero zero zero, one one, zero zero. So only the first option is there. So option one is the right answer there. For very small angles, sine theta is approximately theta. Correct. For small angle, perpendicular is approximately equal for length and base. So this is the reason why we are taking like this. So both the assertion and reason are correct, and R is the reason is the correct explanation for that. It's concept based question. Magnetic energy is converted into electrical energy. Correct. Transformer is always present in the effect of time varying alternating magnetic field. Correct. Here also option four is the right answer, and reason is the correct explanation for the assertion. The surface of the earth potential energy of the particle is u, and potential is v. Change in potential energy and potential at a height h equals to r. Suppose delta u and delta v. then correct relation will be look at the careful observation potential should change to off but not the energy so energy should get changed to off but with negative value so here a and negative value is here so a and d here positive is there so negative is there only in option a and d so option 3 is the right answer because you know that potential energy is minus gmm by r gravitational potential is minus gm by r both goes with negative sign so both energy and the potential will become negatives so option 3 is the right answer got it students so this 35 questions we have covered tomorrow what i will do tomorrow within half an hour i will complete the remaining 50 question and in the remaining half an hour i will take up the synopsis of the first puc chapter students so i will stop at this stage we'll continue tomorrow session thank you students thank you sir